Hi guys. Good to see you again. Hi, Mr. Kane. Yeah. What's on the board now? Oh, uh, that there is a thermal image of some of my students that went to the on the Argonne field trip on Saturday. Would you lose them and had to find them? Yeah, pretty much. Those thermal imaging cameras are great. It's very, it's creepy looking. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. All right. Looks like uh, what we're doing today is we're going to talk about measurement. We're Ooh, gonna, the hard stuff. We're going to see how you measure up. All right. So goals for unit six, we want you to be able to measure with precision. Okay. We want you to be able to identify how many significant digits there are in a given measurement. Okay, so sig figs is short for Sign significant figures. Significant yeah. figures. Some okay. people call it sig significant digits. Okay. Okay, so sig figs. I think that's what we usually shorten it to, yep. right? We're lazy. It's easier to say that in yep. class. Uh, be able to use sig fig math rules. Okay. Um, uh, there are two sets of math rules. Know the values of the metric prefixes. So we've got to memorize some, some things here. Some memorization is going to go on in this unit, isn't there? Yeah, like you got to know that when you ask for a kilogram of meat, you're asking for a thousand grams. Okay. Okay. That's when you go over to Europe. Yeah. Uh, and you solve using dimensional analysis. Okay. You need to convert using metric units. So you, when you do go over to Europe and it's uh, 65 kilometers per hour, you know what speed you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, exactly. Because if you're going 65 miles an hour, somebody's going to be mad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we also need to use scientific notation, which I think is, well, that's easy stuff. Yeah. Right? This looks like an interesting chapter. This one might be a toughie, though, huh? A lot of math involved in here. Yeah. Um, I would actually say that if you don't have a non-graphing calculator, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Because if you have a graphing calculator in class, I don't let you use it. You don't need a fancy graphing calculator, but you definitely need a calculator for this section and actually for the rest of chemistry. Yeah, it's got to be able to do scientific notation. Yeah. Uh, basically, if you can find a log button somewhere on your calculator and it doesn't have a huge screen on it, you're golden. Yep. Okay. All right, so we're starting with fundamental measures here. Okay, length. Length, uh, the fundamental measure of length is the meter used ah. in the metric system. When you say fundamental measure, Mr. Kane, what exactly do you mean? The, the normal way we measure length is in meters? Yeah, the normal way. Okay. The, 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 the standard, the basic okay. units. The ba right. I think uh, the standard unit of measure. Okay, because there are inches. other units for length, right? Oh, but sure. We're used to meters. Okay. But, but what we call the fundamental measure is the meter. Okay. And, you know, we can use centimeters, we can use millimeters. Some people use micrometers. Yeah, those are smaller. That would be crazy to measure like a football field in centimeters, millimeters, and micrometers. Okay. A uh, volume, the fundamental me measure is the liter, which we abbreviate with an L, okay. liter. There are a thousand milliliters in a liter, and actually in chemistry, most of the time we wind up measuring things in milliliters because we don't want to use a heck of a lot of stuff. Yeah. But the, the fundamental measure is the liter. Now that would be for liquids, correct, Mr. Kane? Liters and milliliters? That would be correct, uh, although you can measure the volume of an object that is a, you can measure the volume of objects that are uh, solid. Uh -huh such as a cube, yeah. you can measure the, uh, the volume of it by taking, taking the length, the width, and the height. And everybody who's taken geometry or even uh, eighth grade knows that the volume of an object is the length times the width times the height. Oh, and I bet if those were in centimeters and you multiplied centimeter by centimeter by centimeter, you would get a centimeter cube yep. for a solid object. Ah, look and at that. And the neat part here is a cubic centimeter is the same size as one milliliter. So ah. if we say one milliliter of water, uh, that's going to be the same as a cubic centimeter of okay. a solid substance. Yeah. It's the same volume, okay. not necessarily the same mass yes. or the same density, but yeah. the same volume. Okay. All right. Speaking of mass... Kilograms. The kilogram, uh, abbreviated with a KG. G. Notice a small K, small G. Yep. Uh, usually we wind up using grams, but the fundamental measures are the kilogram, the liter, and the meter. I think there's usually like one test question about that. Measurements and calculations. Yeah, we got to take measurements. All right. All right. Obviously, we've already started doing that in chemistry. Correct. We've, we've used it some graduated cylinders, some beakers. Um, uh, so one thing to be aware of, we've got three different kinds of uh, graduated cylinders in our bins. Uh huh. So the thing is, is that different pieces of glassware have different lines on them. You can see here that this piece of glassware, this beaker, has lines. Each line is worth hundreds. 
So in between those two lines is 100 milliliters worth of difference. Well, I wouldn't want to use a beaker to measure out 15.5 milliliters of water, would I? No, definitely not. This is not a pr yeah, very precise no tool. Okay. All right, the, the lines on it aren't, aren't going to allow you to do that. So this one uh, measures in hundreds of milliliters. There are beakers that have lines that say tens. Okay. This graduated cylinder, though, is measured in ones of mil milliliters. There are ten lines between 60 and 70. So this one I might be able to get 15.5 okay. milliliters out of. So that's an increment of one mil on the graduated cylinder, correct? Right. Okay. right. Sorry, I should actually probably write this uh, one milliliter per line. line. Yeah. And maybe this should say 100 milliliters per line, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. Okay, because it's per line. Uh, so this one I could measure 15.5 milliliters just fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, now there are some devices that do tenths of milliliters that we have. The smaller graduated cylinders are measured and okay. uh, have lines of tenths. Uh, and uh, then there are micro pipettes, aren't they? But these are very precise instruments and they can measure uh, all the way down to the, let's see, what is this, the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, the ten thousandths, ten thousandths of a milliliter. I used okay. to use those when I worked in a hospital lab, Mr. Kane. You worked in a hospital lab? I did. Oh. Precision. How close a measured value is to its other measured values. If you were to measure the volume of a chemical several times, and 50.4 mils the first time, 50.3 mils the second time, 50.5 mils the third time, all three of them together is, that's a pretty precise, isn't it? Because they're almost precise? the same thing. It's almost the same thing, 50.4, 50.5. Reproducibility, 50 isn't 50 it? 50 yeah, that's pretty good. That, that's pretty decent in a lab. Yeah. Because uh, what's the average here? How do you take an average, Mrs. G? Uh, let's see, you take an average, you add up those three numbers and divide by three. 50.4 plus 50.3, 50.5, real quick here. Uh, seven and five is two, carry the one. 161.2. So on my handy dandy calculator, I take 161.2, 161.2, and I divide that by three, and I get 50.4 is how close a measure is to its true value. If you have an experiment where you're wanting to measure your chemicals as close as possible, act being accurate, if you need 46 milliliters and you measure 45.9, 46, and 46.1 milliliters, that's what we call accuracy. Because you're getting close to what you want, the 46, is that correct? Exactly, because you're getting close to what you want. Now, this one, accuracy, the fact that these three are close to each other doesn't have anything to do with anything. That's, that's precision right here, okay. just comparing them to each other. Yeah. Comparing them to what you wanted to get is accuracy. Or what you had to get, what the correct answer is, right. is where accuracy comes in. So this is, this big arrow here, this is accuracy. Right. Looking at them together is precision. So of the two terms, Mr. Kane, which one do you think chemistry people actually lean towards more than the other? Well, something that I've always thought is that in science you can never be perfectly accurate. Okay. It's kind of difficult to be perfectly yeah, accurate. Especially when you're doing labs. Because, uh, you know, there's human error and the, your, the devices you're using, sometimes they're not, pers they're not, they don't measure well enough. Yeah. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to try and eliminate that as well as you can with precision. Okay. So whenever you take a measurement, you want to be as close to the correct, uh, as close to what you want as possible. All right. You want to do, you want to do, you, this is where we have our ability to affect. Ooh, darts. Check this out. Oh, we should be able to tell whether these things are accurate or precise. All right, so this is kind of like your grade, isn't it, in chemistry, Mr. Ooh, Kane? Oh, 100%. This one's, this one's shooting right around 100. And that's what you want, so it's accurate. Okay, so it's accurate because you want 100. You want right. the bullseye. And every time you take the one, two, three, four, five tests, yeah, there were five. you get almost 100%. So you're very precise. Yeah, you're, you're consistent, right? Yes. Okay. Reproducibility. Reproducibility. How about this one? Hey, look. 
Got them all in the same place. Well, that's yeah, that's um, that's precise, all right. You got all pretty right. much your consistent. We got the precision. Yep, but the accuracy is uh, not good. Hopefully, we're aiming there yeah, in the middle. Yeah, you got ten percent, so the accuracy is pretty bad. So no accuracy. Yeah, no accuracy. So this is just precision. Yes, that is just precision. Okay, and this one. Hey, check this out. We hit the whole board. Wow, everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, let's see. Can I check? I can't really check nope. accuracy, can I? Nope. You're all over the place. Precision. 10%, Thirty. Nope. No, because nope. they're not clustered. Nope. They are not so they're not clustered all. and they're not where we want them to be. So this is uh, neither nothing. accurate nor precise. So nope, like that. Nope, pretty bad. All right, now Mr. Kane, those are usually called triple beam balances, but I see more than three. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, this one called? This this is my extra special deluxe oh, balance. Oh wow! All right, I see one, two, three, four, four beams. beams. This is actually quad beam balance. Whoosh! Okay. I would just call that a beam balance. All right, so we have to read this. The measuring device with precision, correct, mm -hmm. Mr. Kane? That's part of the point here, yeah, is that we want to read with precision. I think oh, that was yeah. one of our goals yep. for the it unit. Yep, was one of the goals. Okay, so if I'm reading this thing, I guess I start at the back here because uh -huh. it's got the biggest units on it, so yeah. 200. So I'd put a 2 in the hundreds place. Okay, and then I see an 80, so okay. in the tens place would be an 8, yeah. All right. And then I see a 9. Okay. So right. far, so good. So far, so good. Now the ones place that that's the ones place value. So next yeah. we need a it looks like a decimal. Decimal, and then we go into the tenths place, right, right Mr. Kane? There's seven tenths. There's eight tenths. There's nine tenths, and there's ten tenths. Well, it didn't get to ten tenths. Yeah, did it? no. So it'd be point nine. Point nine, and then one, one two, two, three, four, five, six. Definitely past the six. Se definitely past the six, but not quite to the seven. No. So I can say I six. Agree. Definitely six. And uh, is that an eight? Ooh. Or is it a nine? Well, it's, uh, boy, I don't know. It's past the five. It's past the halfway mark, correct? Yeah. Halfway, halfway. would be about here. So, okay, you're going to say about eight. So you're going to say about eight? I'm going to say about so eight. So we guess this digit right here, the last, the last digit we do is a guess. And then what do we do? We still need one more thing to make this a measurement. Grams. Grams. There we go. A so, unit. <clears throat> a unit. Units are important. So you could have guessed the 9 where I guessed an 8 and it would have still been right, correct? Yeah, yeah. I could have put a 9 here okay. because the whole definition about this last digit is that it's a guess digit. Okay. Okay. Now, some people, well, it's kind of hard to say seven on that because yeah, it, that'd be, it'd be, it'd be farther left. Yeah. Uh, so eight or nine probably is a pretty decent. Okay. Is a, is pretty decent. And uh, if students had gotten eight or nine, that okay. would have been perfect. All that right. would have been fine. Okay. Okay. So just to quickly summarize here, guys, the goal of measuring with a device, you look at the device and you find what the value is of the smallest line. You're finding the place value. Okay. So this, these are uh, these are tenths here. So that means that these divisions in between are hundredths place value. I'm going to guess one place past the hundredths. Okay. That's how I know where my guess digit is. It's one place past what the smallest line represents. All right. So anytime we read a measuring device, because significant figures revolves around measurements, correct? Mm-hmm. Anytime we read a measuring device, we have one more number than the smallest increments. Yes. Awesome. Okay. This one's pretty easy, right? Okay, uh, wait, now let me see. Well, definitely two. Right, because we, we, do we need the zeros in front? No. Yeah, the zeros in front are kind of meaningless. Yeah, that's meaningless. Right? So we don't put the zeros, but we do put the two. So I see a two, and I see a point zero. Yeah, it didn't quite get to that didn't point get one. To the point this one. is actually a tough one to do because you got to realize it didn't get to that point one. Right, so. So you actually have to put a zero there. Point zero five six. It's on the ninth line, so 0 0.09. Mm -hmm. That's what I can read definitely. And then one more number past mm -hmm. the increment, so not a oh, zero. Right. 0 0.090, oh, yeah. Right, because this is the hun th These are with hundredths, yeah. so we have to go. This is the hundredths right here, so right. we have to go one more one place. One more place, so I'd say zero. All right, you're gonna say zero because it's right on the line. Yeah, I would say grams, Mr. K. Oh, you're right. This is a balance. Okay. Yes. Grams. Ooh, liquid volumes. Okay. This is a graduated cylinder? Yes, it is. In increments of ones, correct? Yeah, it looks like increments of ones because there's 60, so there's 70, there's about 10 in between. So if I'm doing this right, my measurement will be one more digit to the right of the ones place. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, which is a decimal oh. tenths. Oh, and before we go on, we should discuss what that is. The meniscus? The meniscus. I don't think we've talked about that yet. But uh, basically, water, when it gets put in a glass tube like this, tends to actually flow up on the tube. Yeah, kind of like that. Because of the surface tension. Because the surface tension actually climbs up on the sides. So we always read a meniscus At from the bottom. the bottom part of the reading just so that we all read exactly the same. Uh, that's actually exactly where we want to measure from. All right, so I see a 60. 60. And then one, two, three, it's past the third line. All right. And then this is going to be our estimate. So I would say it doesn't look exactly halfway. So I would say either 0.3 or 0.4 maybe, yeah? Okay. I would have went with 0.4, so I'm going to write and 0.4. Milliliters. And then you put milliliters, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, okay. I like. That's not how I'd read it now. Ooh. A ruler. A king. A what? A king. A king. Or a queen. Prime minister? President? A, oh my god. A ruler. A oh. ruler. Arf. Something tells me we're going to be doing these videos by our lonesomes very soon. All right, so uh, anyhow, with this ruler, I think I'm measuring nine okay. point. Uh, and it looks like these are tenths place, so I'll want to go one place past the tenths place. Right. I'll go to the hundredths place when I measure. It got one, two, it got to three tenths. Point three, yeah. So I'm going to get point three for sure, and this is where we can debate about it. Okay. But I think that that's perfectly centered on that. Yeah, it's just that the line is thick. It's an awfully thick line, but I'd read it right line. in the middle. I'm going to read it in the middle. All right, 9.35, and since this is a metric ruler... I'm going to assume centimeters. We're assuming centimeters. Okay. Yeah, because this can't be inches, because inches are measured... Okay, guys. On a blank sheet of paper, one, two, and three, let's choose letter J. So three J, not all of three, just J. Press pause, get that down, and bring that back to class with your name on it.